All right, sorry. Let me get the lights going here, everybody. You can see the lights aren't even on in the background yet. Oh, that's good. I like that. Uh, these buttons. <laughs> there we go. Well, good morning, everybody. Hey, it's been, I don't know, six weeks. It's been a crazy long time since I've made a video. And my wife keeps telling me, Matthew, you got to make a video. You got to make a video. And she's right. She's right. I need to make a video. So let's do it. Where have I been? Where am I going? All that good stuff. Can you tell my voice is a little gravelly this morning? That's early. Oh, okay, so I've seen a lot of people ask questions. You know, hey, where are you? Is my first fish tank dead? No, no it's not. But I figured I should probably at least give you a little background as to why I have not making videos. And then I'm gonna give you an update on one of the tanks because there's been so many changes in, in the gallery. Um, yeah. So you guys know, let me let me tell you the story, I guess, from my perspective. The I I used to work for Marine Depot, right? And we all know what happened to Marine Depot at this point. But it was really sudden. Okay, I, I had when I was working for Marine Depot, it started out making like just a video, and then they had an affiliate marketing program because I have a blog as well, as you guys might know. My first fish tank.com, it's all for beginners. And so I had worked for them for like a year and a half, and I was making like a video a week. Uh, kind of whatever I wanted to do because they didn't really have anybody during during the pandemic and then I Had a blogger Max who was writing for me on the blog and that blog While it was very informational and there's tons of good stuff on there. It's also an affiliate marketing blog, right? So um, I would recommend products that I like and then people would click on it and I'd make money so I was making pretty good money from from just my website and then combine that together with making the videos for Marine Depot, you know, I was, now when I say good money, I'm saying like, what I was making, how much was I making? I was making, I think my, I think my income last year was like $36,000. Okay. So don't think like <laughs> I make a ton of money. <clears throat> I was not making that much money, but that's significant, right? That, that, that $36,000 just went away overnight. I got a call from one of my friends who um, told me that Marine Depot was sold. And I was like, okay. And then within a month, I was completely out of work and the affiliate program was completely dead. And so that $36,000 went to zero and the only income I was then making was, uh, was oh, YouTube. Uh, YouTube income was, uh, <laughs> $300 a month. <laughs> you mean you have to have a lot of views to make a lot of money. It's like 300 a month. And then I think I had still had an Amazon affiliate program that was making like 50 a month. So 350 and oh, I had a sponsorship program. I had a sponsor that I was making 400 a month. So four, five, six, seven, fifty. 50. Anyway, I was making well under a thousand dollars a month and that was a huge hit. Now I'm super lucky. <clears throat> The only reason I'm able to do what I do, the only reason I'm able to have this gallery and be able to make videos full time is because I have an amazing wife and my wife's the stable one in the family. She is a school teacher. She's been a teacher for almost 30 years. She teaches in uh, the Palm Springs School District and teachers in California make a good wage and we have a nice house. It's a small house, but it's a, it's a nice house. And um, so anyway, I, if we, you know, if we cinch up our belts, I really don't need to work, which I mean, how lucky is that, right? I, I do work because I love working and I work a lot actually, but um, I am I was able to, to basically work without having to worry about getting paid, right? <clears throat> but, but I don't want to live on the edge. I don't want to live, <laughs> I don't want to live paycheck to paycheck. I don't want to live not being able to go out and have have a meal or go out on a vacation. So anyway, so I'm always looking at ways to kind of up my income doing doing this, doing doing what I love. Once Bulk Reef Supply took over, we didn't start conversations right away because you can imagine a takeover company like that, you know, they had a lot on their plate. <clears throat> and they were hiring a new CEO and, you know, my contact was always um, Ryan and Randy and, you know, trying to figure out how to 
how to get all of Marine Depot into bulk resupply and then what to do with the expanded client base and who to keep and, and who not to keep. <clears throat> so I just assumed that I wasn't going to be, you know, um, on the salary, you know, that I wasn't going to be, be kept on. And, uh, but you know, I was also confident in the work I do, you know, nobody out there yet has just focuses on beginners because there's there's a lot of downsides when you focus on beginners. Now, obviously, this channel doesn't really focus on beginners anymore, but um, you know that's that's kind of my shtick. My, my 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 blog does, my most successful video does. Focusing on beginners can get can get kind of boring uh, for a lot of people, but I really enjoy it. And 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 the reason I really enjoy it so much is because when you have to be an expert, then people always expect you to be an expert. But when you're just focusing on beginners, nobody expects you to be an expert. And, and I don't ever want to be an expert. You know, I, I like having my fingers in, in multiple areas in this hobby. And I don't want to just focus in on, on SPS corals or, you know, because, um, because you guys know this about me too. Like, I don't know the names of things. I don't know the names of corals. I don't know the names of fish. You know, I'm not a scientist, but I love this hobby and I love the equipment and I love helping people and I love teaching and I love setting up. So that's kind of where I want to be. Anyway, so focusing on beginners. So you know, I think it was July was my last month with Marine Depot. And I took the whole month of July off. I hadn't, I hadn't taken any time off. My family went on a vacation, which was awesome. I didn't make any videos uh, for my first fish tank. And I was just like, well, let's figure out the future. I started a Patreon page right after that because I'm like, I got to make up some income somehow. And maybe some of my uh, followers would subscribe. And it was great. You know, I got like 20, 20 Patreon members. And uh, I was looking at other ways of supplementing my income in, in the hobby. And then uh, Bulk Resupply reached out to me, and they finally caught up. And they were talking with basically all the um, all the um, talent from from Marine Depot, which I guess was well the on air talent. I guess that was me at that time. But they were talking with me, um, and we sat down, and had a conversation, I had a conversation with uh, with Ryan and with Randy, and just kind of talked about you know where where I've been. They've seen some of my stuff. They like the quality. You know, can I? Could I fit into there? Bulk resupply didn't really have anything for beginners, and that was definitely an area they were lacking. Did they have the budget for it? I mean, all those, all those kind of questions, you know. And then it ended up working out. But at the same time, you know, they had just hired Remy Bahama Lama Coral, so yeah, um, you know, they already had Jen, um, they already had Thomas, but they just hired Remy, uh, and so they're like, I don't, we don't know if we can take you on. But they ended up, they ended up taking the risk, which is fantastic. And so they they hired me. So they had Remy and me come on at the same time. Um, which, which worked out great. And, and that allowed me to keep making videos. But what happened was I started officially with bulk resupply at the end of August, I think, I want to say like August 23rd or, or something like that. And the way it works is I was going to be making two videos a week and two videos is a lot. Now, two videos of just like talking to the camera that's not much, but two videos with all the editing I do and all the lighting I do and, you know, the sound effects and everything, you know, each video I do, you know, they're, they're eight to 20 minutes long. They take me half a day to film, maybe a full day to film if there's a lot of B-roll and then, uh, you know, one to two days to edit. So, I mean, cranking out two videos a week, if I'm super efficient, that's like, four full days to six full days, somewhere around there. And I'm very committed to doing it. And, and, but the thing about it is you can't just like make a video out of nowhere. There's so much planning that goes into it when you're making it. Well, when I'm making it for myself, it doesn't really matter as much. When I'm making it for a company, you know, I have, I mean, here, let me just show you. Here's my latest video I made for them. Let's see here. Look at this. Right. This is how long it is, right? This is video 33. Single space, one, two, three, right? I mean, the script alone takes me a half a day to write because, you know, I, you can't just write the script. You have to you have to do all your research on the script and then you have to put it together and it has to make sense and then you want it to be somewhat entertaining. Uh, so anyway, I needed to get ahead. And in order to get ahead, that meant I needed to have seven scripts done. Why seven scripts? Well. Because there are things when I'm making videos that I need bulk resupply to send me. You know, I just did a video on quarantine tanks. Right here, look. See over here? Right over here. Quarantine tanks. And 
they don't really have any videos on quarantine tanks. So I needed them to send me a quarantine tank setup, right? But you can't just, I can't just write it in the morning and say, hey, send me a quarantine tank setup and then film it the next day. I need several weeks because, you know, they're super busy. You know, my, my main contact is the video team over at Bull Grief Supply. And um, the person who would order all that stuff for me is is Randy. And he's a super busy guy. You know, I don't know how he finds time to, to, to look after people like me and Remy, but I have to, I have to, I have to order that stuff weeks in advance. So, so what I had to do is August 23rd, I knew I had to get six, seven videos ahead. So I had to write seven videos when I'm doing seven video scripts. Okay. That took me several days to do just that seven video scripts. And, um, so anyway, so I had to get <coughs> seven video scripts done. So that meant that I probably had a week, a week's worth of work uh, where I wasn't making videos for my first fish tank. And then I expect for myself, and, and, and I assume Bulk Reef Supply expects for me as well, consistency. You know, what good does it do to hire somebody who just can't be consistent? Because I, I want to produce that consistent content for them and for everybody who's watching. Um, so if I, if, if, if I have a day where I have a cold or my family has an obligation, I still have to make those videos. You know, when you work for yourself, it's fantastic. I love working for myself, but that means you just don't get time off. You don't get, you don't get vacations. You know, you just, you produce when you produce and you don't produce when you don't produce. So I knew that I needed to get at least two weeks ahead, right? So two weeks ahead means I need to have two, four, six videos done, six videos, right? In order to be two weeks ahead. And so, since the end of August, after writing the script, so probably the beginning of September, I've been working seven days a week when I can. You know, there's things that, that, that pop up that I have to take care of, but I work every day to get ahead for bulk reef supply. And I'm currently, I'm currently, well, I, after this weekend, I'll be five videos ahead, right? I've been doing like one extra video a week. So, you know, every single week I get like a half a week ahead. And so it's taken me forever and we're already middle of, of, of October, but I'm thinking hopefully by, if all goes well and I stay healthy, by the end of next weekend, I will be two weeks ahead. And that's a huge thing. I mean, I've been working nonstop to get two weeks ahead. And once I'm two weeks ahead, then guess what? Then, then this comes back into play. Now it's going to be different. I, I'm not going to be able to do the highly edited videos like I used to do just because I still want a weekend. I still want to relax. I still want to spend time with the family. I still want to, you know, enjoy the, the winter weather down here in Palm Springs. So I'm not going to keep working seven days a week. So that means that I'm probably not going to be able to make a video for the gallery every single week. Uh, but I'm hoping, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm hoping to do a video every other week or every three weeks. And it's gonna be something like this, you know, where I'll update you guys. It's not gonna be, you know, all sorts of fancy clips, but I still wanna share with you guys what I'm working on because I still have, you know, what, over here, the seahorse tank, which I haven't talked to you guys about in forever, and so much has happened. And so much is happening in the reef tank, and then the harem tank, it's not doing so good right now. And then I used to have a quarantine tank over here, but now I have this fancy water box aquarium. You guys are probably like, where the heck does that come from? And then look over here. Can you see that? Probably can't hear it. That's my frag tank. So I want to keep updating you guys on all that stuff as well. Thank you guys for uh, watching. You know, I know a lot of you guys have watched my videos on Bulk Reef Supply and been really supportive, and I really appreciate that. If you guys leave a comment, Apple grief supply. Um, that's not my channel, so I don't I don't respond to those. So if if you see me uh, at, at Apple grief supply and you're like, oh, I have a question or whatever happened to that, just send me an email or uh, yeah, the the best way is just send me an email. Just contact at myfirstfishtank.com. Um, I'm always happy to, to to answer that. I don't really do much on Instagram anymore. I I don't know if I've ever share this publicly, but I am not a fan of social media, <laughs> which is strange. Why would you get into a job that's social media based? Uh, I, I really got started doing Instagram, you know, and I have, I don't know, I have a lot of Instagram followers. Um, how many do I have? I haven't even checked in a long time. 12.3 thousand, but that hasn't really grown in like 
forever. I don't, I don't post. I really don't do much at all because I just don't like it. You know, I'm, a, I'm actually a really private guy. And you might be like, how can you be a private guy and have a YouTube channel? Well, because I only get, I only share with you what I want to share with you here. You know, I don't share with you my, 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 my personal life. I just share with you my reefing life. And I'm able to turn it on. I'm able to turn it off. But, uh, you know, I, I'm actually a really private guy. I don't have a lot of friends. Um, I have a few, few close friends sort of a thing. And I just, I don't like what social media uh, Instagram especially has done, you know, how it makes me think about my day in terms of, of capturing things. And I, I'm not, I'm not ragging on it. And if you love social media, that's awesome. I just, I just don't. So you've noticed I probably haven't been on there very much. This is like the only social media, can you even call YouTube social media? This is the only social media that I really still do because I do like making videos. I do like being creative. I do like showing everybody and learning from the community as well. So I will keep doing YouTube because I do love doing YouTube. Okay, that being said, my puppy is probably gonna start yelling at me. This is playtime for her. And you guys have seen me ramble for 17 minutes. Yikes, I gotta edit this down. But I do wanna share with you guys one tank. You're gonna get one tank update today. And then going forward, you won't hear me ramble like this. I just wanted to give you guys an update. So I think we need to talk about the harem tank. But the lights are barely on. I gotta run to the chiropractor. So we will do that here shortly. I'm gonna show you all the stuff that has happened. It is looking really good. And you might be like, hey, do you have seahorses yet? Did you fix the chiller problem? Uh, what macros do you have in there? I mean, it's, it's cool. So stay tuned. I'll be back here. For you guys, it'll seem like a second, but for me, it'll be like a couple hours. So be back soon. Okay, I'm back. From the chiropractor, you done seeing my face here. Let's just start with the overview of the tank in case you forget. And I'm going to try to remember because I haven't talked about this tank forever. It's a JBJ tank. It's a RF-65, and it came with the tank and with the stand. Lights, I'm using Twin Star lights. It's a freshwater light, so it has a very, very, I mean, here, just, I mean, can you just see the difference between you know, the white there and then the blue of all the reef lights. So it's a very, uh, very white light, very nice light, which I'll show you in a minute. I had to jerry rig something because it uses European measurements and it didn't fit the tank. And so I finally fixed that problem. The tank itself is low iron glass. It's filled with macro algae right now and seahorses are on their way. You can kind of, oh, little fish down there. Down below, you'll notice, right, right down here, um, I put in these fans, see that, the fans I put in, because I used to have the chiller in there, but I've since moved the chiller out, and that has been a great thing. Let me take you guys in real quick, and we will show you some of the updates. Okay, here we go. First up, this is that light I was talking about, right? Sorry, I gotta turn the volume down, or I gotta talk quietly, because I'm gonna keep peeking out here. Super slick light, the problem was, was based on a European system, right? And so even though this was what, 36 inches, and that was the measurement, it wasn't exactly 36 inches. It would actually sit just inside here. So I had to have this piece of glass on top, which is no longer there, because this just wouldn't quite fit. So here's what I did. It took me forever to figure out. These use number, this one's brighter, I'll sort of this one. These use number one screws, and th these, these washers, these, not these washers, these, these, I don't even know what these are. These aren't supposed to be here, right? So what I had to do is I had to go from a number one screw to a number two, and then I had to get it, the longest I could get in a number two was a half inch. And then I put some spacers in there, which you can see now there's a space. The space not, is not supposed to be there. And I did this on all four, right? You can see over here too. See the space? Yikes, all four. And that gave me, here, let me push it. Let me push it to the edge. That's how close it is. You see that? Look at that. Oh my gosh. It's crazy how close it is right there. So, but that, I mean, that's been good. Now I don't have to have that glass there. Hold on, I'm gonna stop this and change the volume real quick, one sec. So now I have this nice, clean glass top. You know, it's truly rimless now, which is great. All right, back here, let's see. Nothing much has really changed. I have, you know, um, this is for the for the chiller over here, so I have it sucking up into there and then coming out over here. And then auto top off, dosing it. What am I dosing, you might ask? 
I am dosing nitrate and phosphate. And look what I started dosing over here too. Can you see this? Look at that little disgusting thing. I'm also dosing phytoplankton, and that's what Tyler told me about. So let me let me let me show you guys down below. All right, so here's what I got in the sump now. Well, there's no sump. What am I saying? There's no sump in here, right? This is a rear filtration chamber. All right, so over here. I'm dosing still the nitrate and the phosphate. I think I, I'm dosing difference of each, but it's working out perfectly just using those little Camor pumps right here. And I am able to keep, I just tested yesterday, see my nitrate's four and my phosphate's like 0 0.08. So this works out perfectly. I don't have to dose that much and it keeps the macro algaes really happy. Those Camor pumps are fantastic. These are like the original X ones and this is the X1 Pro. Um, this one connects to Wi-Fi. These are Bluetooth. This one's a little pain to set up sometime, but once it's going, it's awesome. Now this one, this is what Tyler told me about. He thinks it's awesome, and I agree with him, to dose phytoplankton. So he told me about this product from Easy Reefs. What is it called? Easy Booster? Easy Booster, and it is a marine phytoplankton gel in a mineral suspension. So you don't have to keep it refrigerated or anything. I mean, it just comes in these little bags. You just put a little airline tubing into there. I have it running up, and look how dark it is, right? And then I just have, I, do, I use something like, it's a, it's a crazy small amount, something like one milliliter a day or something. The only trick is you have to make sure you put it in a high flow area or else it will just sink to the bottom. So I have it right over, right over my wave maker. And then I just have my auto top off unit here. And of course we have the UV sterilizer, which is up and running. And everything is powered by the Varios 4 which is super silent, exterior plumb, and then I have it going up, 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 up into this manifold that I built. It goes left into the UV sterilizer, and it goes right into these tubes over here, which basically goes over into the chiller, which I currently set to 73 degrees. So that's pretty awesome. All right, let's go look at the tank. Oh, you guys remember, well, let me show you this. Remember when I first got this tank and I screwed it up and I chipped the bottom, and I ended up super gluing it? Well, look at that. It's holding, it's holding just fine. Okay, tank, tank wise, what do we got here? So in California, you gotta be careful because Calerpa is illegal, but this is a kind of Calerpa that is actually legal. So I bought a few of those, it's doing okay. It surprisingly, it keeps dying, but then it seems to keep coming back, so that's totally fine. This was a big leather coral I had in another tank, and it sheds a lot now, but it seems super happy. This is that green algae I was talking about that calcifying kind, I don't even know what you call it, but uh, it just seems super hardy, which is great. I dealt with, for quite a while, a lot of uh, cyano. I had cyano everywhere, especially on the sand bed, but all I did is I vacuumed it out a couple times, and after I vacuumed it out, like twice, you can still see it growing like a little bit on like the edge of the algae, see that there? But now the sand bed is gorgeous and fantastic, and I think it's, yeah, I think it's fine, so I don't even worry about that anymore. The, what is this called? Come on guys, what's this called? It is called, I should really remember names. I just don't remember names. Anyway, this stuff, whatever it is, <laughs> it grows so fast. I don't know if you remember, I'll see if I can find an earlier picture here, but look how much there is. And it's just sucking up the nitrate and the phosphate, which is gorgeous. Then I have two, not, not two toadstools, which don't look super green here, but they're growing. They're growing just fine. I have one here. And then I have a second one right back here. And then I picked up two Gorgonians from Gulf Coast something or other. And I was an idiot and I didn't acclimate them right. I didn't realize, oh, they're not supposed to be in the air. Well, one of them died, but these ones survived. Super pretty. Not as purple uh, as, as, you know, under other lights. That one's nice. And then look at this one here. Ooh, this one I thought was going to be dead for the longest time. I mean, those, those polyps never came out and now they're out it's so pretty and they're they're photosynthetic but the fact that i feed them right there with the phytoplankton i think really really helps okay then i got the grape stuff and the problem with the grape stuff is okay so i love it i think it looks gorgeous and i used to have it right in here but the conch just kept digging it out and so you can like see remnants of it there's like some back there and then it's just Look, there's some at the base there. So what I need to do is I need to pull it out and I just need to attach it to some rock. I have some fishing line and see this little bundle right there? I can just tie right here around some rock and then that will solve that problem. So I need to do that because look, it's just kind of floating <laughs> everywhere right now. But other than that, this tank is absolutely ready. It's ready for 
seahorses except for one problem which is still there i don't really think you'll be able to see it i'll put my finger up by it see if it'll focus on my finger focus on my finger see that little dot next to my finger it's a jellyfish i forget the name of those jellyfish but they are all over they're all over the back oh, it's gonna focus on the outside so they seem to be less here see here's a good one see if i can focus on my finger please there we go Okay, see right to the left of my middle finger there? Jellyfish. I just don't want these to sting the seahorses. So I just keep waiting and waiting and waiting. I've waited months already. But you know what? It's actually been an okay thing that I've been waiting months because it's allowed me to kind of grow out this tank and where it looks gorgeous and everything's settled in. And I really have my, my nutrient levels dialed in. You know, I, I really just am in, the, in like the trimming stage right now. So I'm still hoping by the end of the year to get a pair of seahorses, but I'm not rushing things. So that was a really crappy video, and I'm aware of that. I just want to say this is my favorite tank. I love this tank. This tank is gorgeous. I like it more than any other tank, and I think I'm going to like it even more once the seahorses go in. Can you guys tell I didn't write a script? That, that was a terrible video, but whatever. You guys got a little update. If you have questions specifically about the seahorse tank or about the macro algae, anything, I'm sure I missed about a billion, jillion things, just put a comment down below. Other than that, we'll see you next time.